Hello and good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Breakfast with Boom. I'm your host, Mr. Boomstick XL. What a Friday. New games are coming out. Jez Corden, tip of the spear when it comes to journalistic integrity, out there dropping some big hint bombs that a lot of people, well, it went over, well, it didn't go over this Mohawk, that's for sure. Folks, I'm here to tell you that the Xbox handheld that I have been dreaming of, I think it's a reality. And he's been putting little subtle, like, uh, breadcrumbs to follow. We're going to get into that story. Dragon's Dogma out. I'm playing it. It's amazing. But unfortunately, folks, with any new game, man, those microtransactions have really kind of hit uh, in not a great way, to be honest with you. Um, so we're going to get into that. We're going to talk about Rise of the Ronin reviews. Um, it's not reviewing very well. It's a sitting, I believe the last time I checked, and I believe it was last night, was a 76. Now, here's the thing. Does 76 make it a bad game? No. 76 is a average score. Uh, it's not a great score. It's not a poor score. It's not unplayable. I did see some video, and, you know, I'm glad I kind of, I, I, I'm, I'm going to buy it, but I'm just not buying it now. Um, I checked out ACG's review on it, and he obviously uh, had advised wait for a sale, which is exactly what I'm going to do. Uh, it does look like a PS3 game. Um, but again, if I I was going to buy the deluxe edition, and then you have, that's like 86 and change after tax, I am so glad I dodged a bullet because I'll pick it up for like 30 bucks during Black Friday, and I will play through it because I do. It does look fun. It just doesn't look like a full price game but here's the thing folks my sister who just called me locked herself out of her house i have to go and bring her the keys because i can't have her sitting there for two hours so what i'm going to do is i'm going to hand over the show to dreadpool who of course is a host in his own right and we're going to open up with the dragon's dogma impressions we're going to open up with uh, the microtransactions and by the time that topic is done i should be back um dreadpool Hand, I'm handing it over to you, brother. You are an amazing host. You'll have no problem with that. And, uh, folks, I will be right back. Obviously, you know, I, I tell everyone, family first. Well, now family first has to come from Mr. Boomstick XL. I will be right back. Dread, take it away, brother. Yeah, so right now there's nothing to see here while Boom is gone. Just letting you guys know this. Um, but really, thank you all for stopping in. Uh, Dragon Dogma 2 is uh, breaking records. It's uh, got great reviews. Um, it has some drama, though, so we got to talk about this. And um, so from what we've seen is that they, they held back the microtransactions from the reviewers. So when, when they gave us the review scores, they actually left that information out. So they could not review those microtransactions and 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 figure out if it was uh, if it altered the score or not. Right. So a lot of people are enjoying the game. A lot of people are having fun with it. Um, the microtransaction little conspiracy th thing here is, is uh, a big thing. You know, if you, if, if you're doing something like that and you're misrepresenting the game, that that's a bad no, no, you know, you can't have that. So we, we got to do something better. Um, so we're going to start off with crispy. Uh, Cause I know he's going to give us a crispy truth on this and he's going to blow it up. Go ahead, crispy. Well, I mean, we got to get into intros, my friend. I'm oh, just saying. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> gunning for this. Right. So, welcome. <laughs> Let's do those intros. Let's. Uh, wait, wait, wait. wait. Uh, it, it, well, well, I'll go. I'll go a different route. I will say this Halo series, salute to you. And that's all I got to say. Because at the end of the day, it's a TV show. They've accelerated timelines. You may not like it. If you're a Halo fan, you may. I'm a Halo story fan. I suck at the games. I have beat Reach and I beat three because they really gravitated towards me. But I got those feels from the end of the series. And if you haven't watched it, they are setting up something special for the next season. And that's why I'll leave at that. Dragon's Dogma. Oh, yes, I do have bars to spit, my friends. So, all right. I will spit them, but I will wait my turn and yes. uh, l let's get we'll, into the rest of the panel. We'll come back to you. So it's prematurely, all right? Premature, right? So Fuzzy, welcome back. 
How have you been doing? How, what have you been playing? Oh, doing great. Glad to be here with you guys. Man, just watching Twitter be its usual self, I guess, but uh, glad to be here. Been playing GT7, some Horizon uh, uh, 5, collecting the cards for the week. They got the new stuff coming next week. Looking forward to the uh, what they have to broadcast on, um, you know, Forza Monthly, you know, next Monday. But uh, Dragon's Dogma, I didn't get a chance to play it just yet, but uh, got some thoughts on that as well. But, uh, man, can't wait to do this. So let's, let's get into it. All right. And then we also have the infamous Infinite Umbra. How are you doing, brother? What what have you been getting into today? Or the oh, man, it's good to be here with you, fellas. I actually, I missed um, Tuesday with Boom. I had a lot of things to do uh, business-wise, but it is good to be here with you, fellas, today. I had a good show yesterday, myself and Daniel uh, McGee, um, on, the, on the fix. Um, man, we talked about a bunch of things. One of the things I'm most excited about is after 36 years, we have a sequel to Beetlejuice. And that's right. something that was I was pretty sweet I was like six years old. I actually I, I got the chills when I watched that. I'm gonna be honest Man. with you. Michael Keaton, my favorite Batman of all time. You know, seeing him back in the role, Tim Burton doing his thing. Oh man, I'm excited for that. Um a few other things, obviously. Uh gaming wise, I had been playing this game on Game Pass called Played Up with Friends. Pretty fun. It's kind of in the vein of overcooked. Uh, a little more management in, as far as the kitchen and, and the management of the restaurant. But it's really fun. I would, If you guys like those types of games, I would say try it out. Uh, and, um, man, what else have I been playing? Uh, Lethal Company, I tried that out. I played a bunch of other things that I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, speaking of Dragon's Dogma that we kind of got brought up a bit, I am going to wait on that. And it wasn't even just because of this uh, this mtx situation that i don't really care for the microtransactions it's because i want to play the game at 60 frames per second and i'm i'm trying to get me a new uh higher end pc so i'm waiting to get that and i want to play it off that so fomo is setting in though but i'm, I'm gonna wait yeah hold off get that pc going get, get yeah. what you're looking for you know play play the way you want to play right mm -hmm. so um yes and i i know that the mtx is is was in the notes and everything like that but the whole point was um it was kind of hidden so for those that don't go into all the details like that and they were just trying to base it off the game that's what we're getting at so um and it and everybody has their own opinion right so uh we'll go back to crispy and let's put your thoughts out there brother what, what do you think what do i think about dragon's dogma i was intrigued until i saw the microtransactions and i said Okay, co-op. This is where you, you get into the skew of is it multiplayer or is it not? I don't care. If you're going to fast travel and charge me for it, I, I'm going to have a problem. And this is why I always wait for games that are, I don't know, new but old old but new that add new things that they think they're doing right but they're not type thing so i see a lot of people playing the game that's great but y'all are supporting a game that is charging you to fast travel think about that for a second the amount of hate that starfield has gotten is incredible and what do you do most of the time fast travel so imagine if they monetize that wouldn't that be interesting it would be like okay division how many times you fast travel in that haha <laughs> we'd throw ubisoft over the coals wouldn't we but it's capcom right they've been doing great lately oh game plays well Let's ignore the charging. Now, I will say this. From what at least Jez Gordon said, he said, look, I didn't look through the, the review, you know, little template they put out, which is funny because he kind of just threw some shade at, you know, reviewing a game. But he said they did say that there's microtransactions in there. Is it? Is it that 
we're in Hell Divers 2 territory now. That's why the Steam user scores aren't great. Because they don't want this. Okay? But people are still playing it. So this is where I go and say, I've experienced microtransactions. I've I've called them out when they're egregious. The the um when Gears 5 came out, the tour of duty system was egregious. It didn't let you earn anything. But we're talking about me playing PvP multiplayer the majority of the time. And at the PvE, it's horde mode, which didn't really it, it added to the tour of duty, but it didn't really do anything. But we're we're really talking about cosmetics here. We're not talking about being able to move within the universe you're playing in. That's a problem. And unfortunately, everybody, there's probably going to be people that are going to be in the chat that are going to be like, oh, it's just an amazing game. Okay, it can be amazing, but you're supporting something that is doing something that me as a gamer, at least, <laughs> I'm not a fan of. Sorry. I will I will pay $30 uh, you know, 6 months down the road and try it out now because of what I've seen. And I have both sides. Everybody's enjoying the game and then there's people that are like, "Dude, like what is going on here?" That is up to you as a human being. That is not up to me. Okay? If you want to pay that money or you want to ignore it, that's fine. I've done it. I think we've all done it in some way. If you love something, you go for it. I don't love Dragon's Dogma. I never played it. I was intrigued by it, and now you have turned me off because you are telling me that something as simple as fast traveling is going to possibly cost you money? <laughs> no. I, I value my wallet. I will go play another game on Game Pass and have a good day. All right? Like, what do you want me? I have I have games like Fallout series got me interested in the Fallout again. Been playing Fallout 4. Okay? That's that's on you. Like, you want to do that? Okay. I don't hate you for it, but don't act like my values and saying that this is like going to another level is not good. And I hope they change that. There's certain aspects you don't monetize, and that is one of them. Come on, man. And people are ignoring it. You want to ignore it because the game's the game looked really good. It had me intrigued. I almost bought it. And then I saw started seeing people that I respect the hell out of say dude this is this is a little crazy this is a little out of what we even thought was possible and that's where you're going to set up and say okay playstation gamers you wait for it because it's gonna happen and you're going to be you're going to be buying fast travels you're going to be doing all this and that they are setting you up baby and you know what i just bought skins or didn't. That's what I did. Now we're in a different realm. But that's that's up to you as a human being. I ain't buying it. Sorry. I'll wait until it's discounted. And then at least if I have to buy it fast travel, I'll say, oh, okay, well, at least I, I only paid 20, 30 bucks. That's the way I'm looking at it. But everybody else might have a different opinion. I'm just, I'm giving mine. You know, and that's the, that's the thing, right? Um, you're giving your opinion based on the information you've been given. And that's that's the beauty of it is you're able to make your choice and you're not telling anybody to make anybody's choice. Uh, you're not forcing them to make that choice for themselves either. You know what I'm saying? And um, so we're going to go to Fuzzy. Uh, what do you think about all this? Because uh, I know you said you wanted to play this. It's got some mm -hmm. top scores. Um, people that have been playing it are are actually enjoying it. So it's yeah. really not taking anything away from them. Um, but for the normies, you know, you, you see that this this can be a detriment, you know, if they're not given the for, uh, the full potential of their information that they can make the judgment. What do you think? Of 
I'm, I'm kind of torn. Now, full disclosure, haven't gotten a chance to sit down and really get into it and play it yet. Pre-ordered it, downloaded it yesterday, fell asleep. So haven't gotten a chance other than the character creator from like a week ago. Now, looking at some of the reports as far as the microtransactions and knowing uh, like a little bit about how the story was not really crafted, but how they tried to direct you to engage with the world. I'm not as worried about the fast travel microtransactions, but I I don't like the fact that they hid or or you know kept it out of plain view during the review period as far as microtransactions. Same thing happened with Grant uh, Gran Turismo Seven. They waited until after the, all the reviews were in, you know, all the the positive, you know, high scores, and then it's like, oh, twenty dollars gets you ten million dollars, which not only was kind of shady for them to hide it, but also the fact that it was more than ha you got half the value for your dollar in comparison to Gran Turismo Sport, the previous title that was, you know, out five years prior type of thing. So that that was, you know, egregious, but you're able to earn money in game. So it wasn't like a necessity, although they did make it, it seemed like intentionally grindy so that that would be a kind of a, uh, a considered quick, you know, sh or shortcut or something like that. But Incentive. I, it, yeah. Exactly. It, it incentivized you to look over and say, well, for $10, I can get a couple million and I could just buy that car. But in the grand scheme of things, you'd be doing that way too much to the point where it would, it would I wouldn't say bankrupt you, but you, you'd be better off putting that money towards real cars at that point. Um, but with this, with the fast travel, the, the, the game intentionally makes it so fast travel isn't as warranted of a thing. Now, you are able to still do it in game without buying the microtransactions. It's just a matter of the fast travel is limited in game to begin with. So you're only able to go from city to city. And I think yep. it was like three or four main cities. So that mm -hmm. that's one of the things. But they they really want you to engage with the world on foot with your your pawns to possibly get attacked by griffins or discover a chest in in the woods or something along those lines. So the game story is kind of built around the adventure of traveling as opposed to fast traveling. Which even when you fast travel, it's not a guarantee. Which this also kind of makes me a little weary as far as the, the microtransaction aspect of it, because from what I hear, when you do pay for the ox cart to fast travel between cities, sometimes you can get attacked and then it's like the cart runs off. You, one of your pawns is down. You got to go and revive them and you're in the middle of this you know, immense battle and you just wasted your coin to fast travel. Do you get a refund in cases like that? I don't know. So it it is a, a very weird precedent for them to do this um we've heard similar ideas in games like battlefield with that previous ceo saying oh reload should cost you money kind of thing um so i don't want to see stuff like this continue or be rewarded but i kind of already rewarded them by pre-ordering the game um but the the basis of what i pre-ordered the game for hopefully it looks like those still are intact it's just a matter of Either, you know, since I bought it on PC, I could either mod the game and then just not have to worry about that altogether, or I could just see how grindy it is. And if it winds up being too grindy, then yeah, it it it'll show that Capcom is kind of flicked the uh the the coin machine on on their game or on their player base more so than they they probably should, and it'll hurt them in the long run. Because let, let's think about this. Like if this was not a thing, like they didn't add those microtransactions after the reviews were in and people were enjoying the game for what it was, they would probably sell a heck of a lot more copies, kind of like in the vein of, you know, Elden Ring, as opposed to now this controversy about the microtransactions is going to make like more than like half this panel pause on buying the game and possibly even listeners pause on buying the game until it's one, it's either marked down or just skip it all together because of the, the, you know, the stigma with microtransactions in general. So a bit torn. I, I, I'll have a, a probably a more grounded response, you know, in a couple of days after I get some time in to see the grindiness of it. I said the same thing with Gran Turismo. I didn't like the grind compared to their previous game for the fact that you were, you know, racing the same amount and getting like half to a third the amount of prize winning money for those races. So it, it was like it was an intentionally, you know, stick stick it to the the player kind of thing i don't know if that's quite the case but it is 
a bad precedence for them to go this route. And I, I hate when developers kind of do this scummy stuff and then look at us like, oh, we're the bad guys because we didn't buy all the copies. Well, we're not going to buy the copies when you keep on doing this foolishness. So that, that's all I got. Yeah. And then that's the thing, right? Uh, is when they present us with a bait and switch, um, the fact that the um, uh, journalists like uh, Jez actually did come back, you know, and that's that's the beauty of it. Jez did follow up and say he did not read the notes. He did not, you know, but he did say that it's in there, um, you know, and that's that's part of the issue is the the fact that sometimes we're relying on certain people and we don't get all the information. And then when we do, it's an, it's an after effect. So it's a shocker. It's like, well, wait a second. Well, they did bait and switch the copies that they played, but the reviewer should have also been a little bit more thorough. Um, so there's also the rift crystals that makes the game easier. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So now, now you're playing, now you're doing a, a piece of payment to make it easier to play where you're not grinding as much or as powerful. And that's, that's kind of an issue. Um, Ultimate Umbra, what do you, what do you, what are your opinions on this part of it? This aspect, it, you know, I'm, ult you. I'm ultimate Umbra now. <laughs> I've leveled up. I told you ultimate, ultimate infinite Umbra. So I, I, I took out the, <laughs> listen, uh, I think, I think fuzzy, my brother hit a lot of it on the head for one, those, those crystals to fast travel. They're very hard to come by. They're not typical to come by. So, there's a question here that I think, and this is the thing, and this is a problem I've seen in the community or anybody. It's not just Xbox. Anybody, whenever you like something, don't get into the habit of, well, I'm just going to defend it because I like this game, so I'm going to defend it even though it's a shitty practice. Stop that shit. Excuse my language. This morning, I know. Sorry, boom, wherever you are. Stop that because we're we're customers we're consumers i'm not defending a shady uh, microtransaction i don't care how much i like a game now i will be a, a i'm a i'm a cosmetic thought i'll tell you that right now that doesn't change anything in a game except my looks i, I like to look cool yeah i got that will smith in me of man in black I, i'll make this look good i want to look good when i play a game right but stop the whole, I'm going to defend anything because I like this game thing. Stop that. And stop trying to shame other people for having an issue with it. You don't have to have an issue with it. But don't tell me I can't have one. That's can one. I, can, I, can I just interject real quick? Because sure. I have a question. Because I haven't played the game, obviously. I've already said that. It, so you can play co-op, correct? Yeah. All right. So you can play co-op. No, no, and there's no co-op. It's it's your other player's pawns, which it's still AI controlled. That would be about the closest to co-op. Wait, can uh, I thought the other people can join in with you? Like, um, no, it's just their pawns. Okay, just just their pawns. Yeah. Right. Well, well, that's even worse. But yeah, I, I was going to ask a question. Okay, if it because everybody's it, yeah. there's many people that are acting like it's co-op. I'm going to be honest with you because you're like, oh, I have I have a group of people. Yeah, I, don't that too. I think that's what threw me off because I've seen people saying that. But I yeah, it's just, I mean, I mean, all at the end of the day, I, I'm not I'm not sitting here acting like I played the game. All I'm asking is one question, okay? Because I played Division and I fast traveled, okay? And I fast traveled before other people. But if you can't fast travel, if that's a co-op game, and this is the realm that I'm worried about, you're going to go... And you're going to have to walk all those miles and these people are going to complete the whole thing. And you're going to be sitting there like, I didn't get to do nothing but walk. Don't kill that come dragon on, until man. I get there. <laughs> hey, don't kill that dragon. I mean, I mean, come on. Hey. I mean, I mean, you, I don't could have any say, you could say I'm being like, you know, totally facetious. But I mean, what are we thinking about here? Because, you know, multiplayer and co-op gaming has become more prevalent than ever, especially this year. And you look at a game like this, and it could involve co-op over a period of time. Are we going to go back to the age when you had, you know, if you bought the DLC or not in Gears 3? You know what I'm saying? If you had the the uh, season pass through through the whole gears three but, you know but, like but, all but, the dlc before you, like before you, you know what i mean let me, let me jump back in here and cook real quick brother because yeah. I, I don't want to lose what i was at so my thing is this some of the things we have to stop doing again you don't have to have an issue with it however please quit telling other people that they have to feel the same way as you again i'm not going to defend shady uh microtransactions i don't care how much i like a game 
or how much you like a game, you're not going to convince me otherwise, right? So I'm going to give my thoughts on it. You don't have to agree. That's fine. This is what this is about. We have we can have disagreements. We don't have to agree with everything. I just don't like the dictation. That's one. Two. Well, these other games did this. You all didn't say it on that. If ever if I complain about every single thing that happens in this world, I will never be happy and play a game. There are other games that did things I didn't like. Sure. Maybe I didn't find a problem with that at that time. I find an issue with this. People mentioned Devil May Cry. They absolutely did do that shady red crystal thing in Devil May Cry, Cry 5. I loved Devil May Cry 5. I didn't buy into those. Those are optional. Now, that's less egregious, however. When I have to pay to change my character, as I do in here, if I want that option, or if I want to travel because those crystals are rare, then it's a problem. And the reason why it's a problem is because it sets a precedent. It's not like, well, that's only a dollar or two. Sure, it's cheap. And if you have the money to do it, then do it. I'm not going to, I'm not pocket watching you. If you want to do what you want to do, do it. Hell, I might do it because I'm that type where I want my convenience, right? So I might not feel like running across the whole area to Crispy's Point and, and, and get that dragon before somebody else gets it. Hey, right? But I'm not going to sit here and be like, yeah, that's fine. It's just, that's no problem. But it is a problem. And, and this, here again, is the, the, this is the thing. When you have anything that comes down to money, you never know what any of these corporations or, or whomever will do what they do. And, and if they have it where in a single player game that uh, obtainable items that you can already get by earning them, who is to say that they're not going to nerf however you have to earn them and make it even worse so that you'll be thinking, hmm, maybe I should buy that crystal to travel. We don't know. I'm not going to be like, I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt. No, I don't trust them to give them that. I don't know these people. I don't know these corporations. They can go over these directors and say, this is what you're going to do. And they're going to do it. So, uh, again, I get those who don't have an issue with it. I'm perfectly fine with you not having an issue with it. Please stop telling other people not to have an issue with it because you don't have an issue with it. That's, that's what I would say to this. Again, also, too, there is confusion here. I agree um, with you guys where you point out Jez. Jez is above board. I, I, I highly doubt that he just lied and said, well, they didn't have these, uh, they didn't present the uh, suite of, of microtransactions, microtransactions rather beforehand. I doubt he just, oops, I missed it. I doubt that, right? But let's say that is the case. I doubt it, but okay, cool. That's fine. My biggest problem still is, is that some of these microtransactions I think are a little egregious. That's that's where I stand on it. I'm not going to be like, oh, down with Dragon's Dogma. I'm still getting the game. Uh, but And I'm not saying anybody should not get the game. They are, at the end of the day, an optional thing, right? But I'm, not, I'm just saying there is no need for us to go out of our way to defend it either and hush anybody who has a dissenting opinion. That's what I would say. Right. You see, and that's that's the thing. We all have to remember we're all different uh, – different people, different appearances, uh, different interests, everything, you know, um, and we all want the same verdict, right? We all want the, the game to be good. We want the games that are out there that these devs make to, to come out. And even if it's not for us to come out as a smash hit, we all want them to be 99, hundred, whatever, uh, even if they're not for us. Uh, and that's the way it should be, right? We shouldn't want any game to fail and that, you know, and for, um, Again, Jez did review uh, the game. He did say it wasn't there, and he, he did come back, and that's why I always applaud these guys, just like Tom Warren has come back and, and made clarifications as to what has gone on. Jez did come back, say he didn't read the, the, the material, and, and it does say it in the material, but he did not play it, and that, that's where I'm getting at. That, that's my point of view is why are you presenting a game for, for, for a review copy that nobody has access to everything, you know, so you, you yeah. can't properly review everything. And that's, that's kind of the point I'm making, you know, let the devs make the game that they want to make. We shouldn't be sitting there telling them how to make the game. Um, we should be voting with our wallets and, but we should also have proper information. And that's, that's my point of view. You know, um, none of us here other than boom has played the game. So um, once boom gets back, he will let us know his, 
his uh, opinions of the game. But from what he said so far, he's he's having a blast with it. You know, so we're not negating how fun the game is. is. It's just these other things. Right. It all started with a horse. Remember, for those that do remember, we all played and got free map packs. We got free uh, upgrades to weapons and, and, and other additional things, skins, clothing, articles, whatever. It was all part of the developers loving the game and and giving us extra right and then it all started with that horse where you only paid a dollar it's only a dollar right but look where we're at now it's it's gotten beyond that and i understand there's a need for this in the industry at times but that's where i want more people to be open and honest about this stuff being there uh, it's not really a fact that um it's there and it's it's going to um ruin the game because it's there and, and like infinite umbra i'm sorry i'm sorry ultimate infinite umbra said <laughs> <laughs> um you know you shouldn't be delegating to me how i should feel about these games right it, it shouldn't be out there like that you, you make your own decision and that that's what we're getting at is, is we're all on the same page on these things where you should be able to enjoy the game without you know anybody telling you what to do and this yeah again, and, and, this and going game, to that again though chris but just to add uh oh excuse me dread dread um is i give you a boost on the name and you, you <laughs> crispy dread yeah. i just gave you a new name crispy we're, always, we're twins i don't know how this happens crispy <laughs> it's early hey i've worked over that but no I, I, my, my beard shaved bro just but saying. but to add to that is is again i'm i think uh what it is gets weird when people act like don't you talk about that thing that i always find odd and it's just what we do we talk games so if you're sitting here saying don't talk about it then you you also also beholden to that now again uh just to go to a point that our brother Steele is saying in the, in the chat he's saying that jazz corrected himself and said that it was there right again my statement was i don't care if it was there or not that's not even my point of contention my point of contention is them adding shadier parts of the MTX that shouldn't be there, changing the character appearance. Now, it, I think it's, it's I have seen at least that it's not as hard to get to that point to obtain that to change your appearance in game, right? Or for instance, fast traveling. I, I, I don't think I've ever heard of any game actually offer microtransactions to fast travel. I've, I don't think I've ever seen that in a game before. Have you all ever seen it that? It doesn't happen. No. But that's so it's, it's odd. And I think one little you, step. Exactly. Is, you keep allowing it, that. It, it allows for more. That's the in. problem I have with it. Mm -hmm. This is this is this is the the mindset that it, us like certain of us that have played multiplayer games over anything else understand what they're doing, and I feel sad for you single player <laughs> gamers that like. Because I didn't even realize I thought it was co-op. Apparently it's not. <laughs> yeah. I I really, I really thought it was co I mean, come on. Come on, man. Think about that. Think about it for a second. Never had fast travel be monetized in some way, shape, or form. And as I have seen, those crystals are magically hard to get. <laughs> Why is that? That is up to you as a human being. I'm going to tell you right now, there's enough people playing this game that this is going to become a trend. And I will be laughing at all of you when you start complaining about it when it becomes the trend. And I'm going to sit there and be like, bro, sorry I tried to tell you. I mean, I'm a gears head, and I talk crap about the freaking Tor Duty system for like a year, okay, until they changed it. All right, because they didn't allow us to earn what we thought was respectful to earn. But we're playing PvP. We're not even playing PvE. The horde mode was not really the same as the PvP. The Tor Duty system really came down to the PvP. And it pissed us off. And that was about cosmetics, by the way. This yes. is not the same as what we're talking about. We're talking about your experience between the game that you bought and paid for that involves you and the AI. That is unacceptable in my eyes. 
Yeah, no, I, I, I absolutely agree. And I'm back. Uh, it took me 38 minutes, a little bit long. I think 20 minutes back and forth. My sister is saved. Thank you so much, Dread, for doing it. You know what was interesting, folks? I watched my own show. I've never done that before. And that was actually pretty cool. I'm like, oh, wow, it does actually look decent. You know, the nice border. The gameplay looks crisp. You know, I, you know, I was, I was very, I was very surprised. Everyone killed it. Obviously, great points. Uh, listen, I want to be completely fair here. I'm only an hour into Dragon's Dogma. I think everyone is on point. I really, really love Umber's point about there. There are a lot of people in the community, and I hate to use the word capping for this game because it's a good game. The game is really good. Uh, I'm again, I'm at the at the point where. You first come out of the dungeon, and the world is there. It, it gave me Elden Ring vibes. Is 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 what I what I took from it. Um, I I my 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 pawn is this lion guy. He's like seven feet tall. He's freaking awesome, and I can't wait to get into it. Uh, like Umbra, I like looking good. I don't mind cosmetic um, uh, microtransactions at all. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm not I'm not ashamed to say this, folks. In the last, I don't know, maybe month or so, since the last two updates for, for Halo Infinite, I bought $44 coins twice. And I didn't even think twice about it because they had new gear. And I, and you as as you can see, I don't like looking like a regular Spartan. My dude's got a he's got a pop. You know what I'm saying? Like I got a Thundercats looking uh, one with a with a Panther mask, and you can almost be like from Wakanda. I got a samurai. I got oh, oh, and I love looking good, so I don't mind spending the money. the The microtransactions for the fast travel is just nails on a chalkboard, and they're gonna have to fix this. They're gonna have to. I, I think the way that you fix this, Capcom, if they're listening, um, is they're gonna have to do some sort of you know, we're sorry for being uh, for for you know trying to price gouge you. Here's a here's a here's a pack of crystals, or here's a uh, you know what, some weapon skins or weapons, or they need to do something where it's a across the board. Wouldn't no matter whether you PS5, your PC, whether you're on Xbox, you get this DLC package for free. It gives you a bunch of crystals, gives you a bunch of weapons, gives you you know a, a mode that makes it easier or whatever to kind of qualm some of the, the the rumblings because again you hate to see it but i really do like what umbra saying please do not tell other people how to feel about this because again this is their corporations capcom is one of my listen anyone that's been watching the channel we've been doing this for six years folks capcom for me because i'm a resident evil stan Tip of the spear, my fav my favorite publisher slash developer of all time. Ask anybody that knows me. That was my friend, uh, my friend Jaded Destroy. Before I actually had a PC, I used to call him up and be like, "Hey, Joe, eh, eh, any Capcom news?" You know, because that's how much I was into Capcom. I, there's no defending this, folks. This is it's not good. It's it's just not good, especially when uh, you hear that like these fast travel crystals are very hard to come by. I mean, I I bought the uh, deluxe edition. I think it was like ten bucks more. And so from sixty nine to seventy nine, I think it was like eighty six and change after tax. I don't mind that. I I don't mind. I, I buy all deluxe editions, whether it's on PlayStation. If there's a deluxe edition for Switch, I buy it. If there's obviously on Xbox, I'm going to buy it. I like the deluxe editions. I like getting the extra shit. That that I do. That, that's what I do. But you know, and yeah, here's just, what I want to know from you, Boom. Sure. Having this out of podcast experience. Did you like and share this podcast? I did like and share. I actually hit the like button. I hit. I, 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 and I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie. When I hit it, I'm like, "Ooh, I'm dirty." I hit. That, I hit my own like button. <laughs> so if you if you all wouldn't mind also feeling dirty like boom and like and share this out to so we can get more people here and and just enjoy these shows with boom. So really appreciate, I appreciate that. that. Very, that's very kind of you to say. I, and you know something? It's it's again. It's like share and hit the hit, hit. And if you're feeling extra generous, folks, I'm only going to say this once per show. Hit the bell icon so you know when I go live. And you know what? Uh, come check out the shows. Uh, but listen, I do want to catch up on super chats. We have quite a few of them. Um, and I do want to get into the Jez Corden stuff. 
Um, he's been out here on the socials putting out some very interesting tidbits. And look, like I said, I I, I really do like Jez Corden. I know him personally. We got a chance to meet at E3 2019. He's a gentleman gamer. He does an amazing job. He's very, very accessible uh, for someone in his position in the gaming media. And obviously he does that because, well, at, at his core, he's a gamer. And we know him, obviously, from Windows Central, but most of us know Jez Corden from, well, the Xbox 2, which is one of my favorite shows to watch. Him and Rand are just fantastic. And now that Rand hasn't been doing videos, his Xbox 2s are, man, they're sometimes four hours long. Like, holy shit, that's crazy. But it's good content. And I want to get into some of the stuff that he said. Everyone has it. Um, I, but let me catch up on Super Chats, and we'll start first with Jay Slay, who drops a very generous $5 Super Chat. He says, sup, boom, and panel. Can't believe Hot Wheels Unleashed 2 is in Game Pass. I am downloading that, dude. I cannot wait to freaking play. He says, it's a AAA experience. Also, X-Men 97 is crazy fire. I'm six years old again. Yeah, I actually was talking. I didn't watch it. I was talking to Kay Asante, who was busting at the seams. He was both excited and disappointed. He says, hey, you got to watch both episodes so I can talk to somebody. So as soon as the show is done, I'm actually going to watch X-Men 97, uh, uh, yeah, episodes one and two. Yeah, it looks, again, I was I've seen fan. some clips of it, boom. It looks really impressive. Yeah, and I am very happy with the animation as far as like the, when they're fighting and stuff like that. I, I can't wait. I, I, was, I was a big fan in the show of the 90s. I was obviously much older than, of course. <laughs> he was sick. Oh my God. Jay Slay was six years old in the nineties. Mm -hmm. I was an old man already a part of the NYPD. So it <laughs> <laughs> makes me feel very old today. Uh, Jay Slay. Thank you so much for the super chat, brother. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, gamers play HUD zero drops a very generous $5 super chat. And he says, morning, boom, micro trans aren't a problem for single player games. As long as it isn't forced and, ne and a necessity, we don't always have everything accessible. I mean, listen, he, you, you are correct uh, for a single player game. Um, again, some of the things it's, it's, I think it's walking a fine razor's edge, at least in my opinion, the changing of your character, you got to pay for, you know what this reminds me of? And it's, it's a, it's a, not a really good comparison. The fact it really does make this look even worse. Do you remember when that metal gear zombie game came out? That was nothing short of just garbage then you had to pay for a save slot. Do you remember right. that? I was thinking uh, about that. That was kind of what this felt like a little bit. And I and look, folks, Capcom, this is it's very unlike Capcom. They don't normally do things like this. Like, for instance, Resident Evil 4. It comes out, and months after its release, they give you the ability to buy like weapon upgrades or like for instance if you don't want to go and find all the weapons there is a like a ten dollar unlock everything mode some people who don't have the time i mean i i, I you know i go and look at the comments like when you go to like a, a microtransaction and you look at some of the comments on your or like on xbox live i don't know if they have that for playstation but i know the xbox has like you know and most of the comments for four stars and most everyone that I read were like, listen, this is a time saver. I'm a dad. I'm a mom. I, you know, I work two jobs. I work midnights. I don't have the time as I, like I did when I was a kid. So this is great for me. So it's going to be different for everyone, obviously. But I, 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 that's, if you're going to do it months after, I don't mind. This up front, you know, shoved in your face. Hey, you want to fast travel and you want to change your character and you want to make the game easier, pay. It's, it's just not good. Um, so thank you so much for that, brother. Super appreciate it. Uh, we have El Monte drops a very generous five dollar super chat. And Monte says, What do you think about the Italian developers who are now pulling their game from they are making on Xbox? Just making fun. We're it's you know what, dude? We're, we're gonna before we get into the jazz core and stuff, I want to talk about that because Umbra was beside himself disgusted. And I think I think it is it's egg on the face of the developer. Uh, it's even I think it it's even worse for for Xbox. And again, we, why is this happening? Well, they didn't specifically said they talked about making the performance on PC and PlayStation Five the best. Uh, what people are suggesting, and again, this is you know I'll go I'll I'll, I'll 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 pose this question to Fuzzy when we get to him about it. Is the potato the issue? The the Series S. 
Uh, is the potato to blame for this? I don't know. Uh, I'm not a tech guy. Um, but we will we'll ask Fuzzy that question whether or not the potato is to is to blame. And it, and it may or may not be, considering when you see what they did with Boldar's Gate 3, they actually figured out a way to make both the big boy versions even better through the Series S, which is a little weird, but they figured it out. And Larian Studios, you know, they're, I, I, th- I, I don't know if they're bigger or smaller than this Italian studio, but they were able to figure it out. Uh, I don't know why this studio couldn't, but again, we'll get to that in a second. Um, but we're going to get to that, brother. Thank you. Andre Doyle drops a very generous $10 super chat and says, what's up? It's game show season again. Hellblade 2 in less than two months. Also, Godzilla x King Kong, uh, Dreadpool, and Wolverine. Yeah, Beetlejuice, yes. Uh, with Tim Burton using practical effects like the first one. Yeah, I, I love the practical effects. I love when they do it in Star Wars. I love it when they do it in, in, in almost anything. Jurassic it's, Park. Jurassic Park is another one with, the, uh, with, with using Mad the old school. Mad Max schools. Fury Road is the prime example. Another fantastic one, which, by the way, I saw the trailer for the new one, which I believe is a prequel. It looks dope. Uh, yeah, yeah, it looks really good. Uh, Andre Joyle drops an additional $2 super chat, and he says, also, Halo Season 2, Episode 8. Yeah, it's... Okay, I'm going to quote Everborn Saga here, and he said, and I quote, that Episode 8, which is the season finale of uh, of Season 2 for Halo, is the halo uh, the uh what did he say? What exactly did he say? A Halo ass the Halo most, episode. The and most it, Halo than yeah, a Halo episode should be. <laughs> I've heard nothing man, but positives. It's so good. Oh, it's oh so my good. God, it's so freaking good. Uh, it ends. No spoilers, folks. Here, please watch it if you didn't. It's it's phenomenal. Um, uh, so oh, Andre Doyle drops an additional five dollar super chat. Andre, thank you so much for the generosity, brother. He says, "I'm excited for Hellblade 2, Project Mara." And and the Insight Project from from Ninja Theory, Xbox has a ton of games launching this year and moving forward. Yeah, I'm Project Mara is going to be the one that I think a lot of people are not. We don't have much information on it. We know it's going to be in a flat. We know that it's going to be in the one the one like area. Um, it's I think it's going to be very PT like, but it's also it's going to be. Um, Focusing on what mental illness is, which is really big with them. Obviously, Hellblade at its core is about making mental illness awareness. I think that is phenomenal. Um, and uh, I, I can't wait to see what they're doing with uh, Project Mara. We also have Meet Me at the Grill. Brother, that, I've never seen that name here. Well, welcome to the program, brother. And thank you for the very generous $2 Super Chat. Super appreciate that. So, Gentlemen, let's let's get into this one here. Um, now, what what are we talking about? Because, of course, I got to give credit where credit is due. Hasdor Gaming, one of the premier people on on X and, of course, Twitter, depending on wherever you call it. He posts. He's he's another one like Idle Sloth uh, that consistently puts out amazing tweets. And he put out a tweet yesterday regarding a game called. Okay, so I'm going to probably ruin the name. Inotria? Uh, it's E-N-O-T-R-I-A. I think it's last. Inotria. Inotria. Thank Inotria. you for that, brother. Yeah, Super appreciate it. So Inotria, yeah. the last song. This is being developed by an Italian studio. And it was originally announced, and this is where we get we get a little weird here. It was announced as an ID at Xbox funded game and well according to the developer and i quote thanks to hazard or gaming of twitter he says uh they, they say the, the studio with regard to the xbox series we have decided in order to ensure a superior experience for pc and ps5 players to reevaluate the possibility of an xbox release post launch so they were working on all, I, all the versions, and they ran into some development trouble with the series. W- w- again, was it the X? Was it the S? I, I don't know. But I think, Umbra, where you, you kind of really want to dig into this is the fact that this was announced as an ID and Xbox game. They took the money for the being, in, being a part of this. It was announced a, a, in Japan uh, as an ID at Xbox game, we I saw the trail. I watched it twice. The game looks 
it looks really good. Uh, now, again, it's very Souls-like, at least it seems to me. So I don't know if it's going to be for me personally. But I, when, when a game is announced for ID at Xbox, usually that means there's some sort of a contract. Usually that means it's going to potentially, potentially could go into Xbox Game Pass. Well, Umbra, the game isn't being made at all right now. Yeah, it's, it's a few problems I have with this. And it goes to the greater problem of third-party games skipping the platform in general. Yes. But it being... A, I, I it uh you know ID at Xbox game and like you said being promoted by Xbox and likely giving money to help fund them to do things and then all of a sudden like oh well we're gonna focus on PlayStation and, and PC is a slap to the face of all of us and I, I didn't even care or know about this game. Most of us didn't. So it's not even like oh you you didn't even know. I'm sure some people will be like you didn't even know. I did not. But I did I not know. I, I I forgot about it. I remember the trailer, and I'm like, oh, that's very like that bloodborne ish, right? It mm -hmm. looks a little, you know, that's we, what there, like. there are a dime a dozen nowadays. The blood, yeah. you know, the, the the bloodborne type, or excuse me, the uh, souls like game. So it is what it is. But the, this that's not even it. It's principalities in this smoky. And the problem is, is that you're right. It was an idea uh, Xbox game, and then for them to take that. What I imagine they got a little funding. I'm going to guess they did, knowing how Xbox does things, and then they skip out yep. on the platform. Uh, it, it leaves us here uh, wanting something that you already know our Who brothers are going to use against us regardless. Now, it's not like I'm saying this because, well, they're going to use us against us. That's why they shouldn't do it. But it's the fact that it's always something where we're left out as the odd man out. And I'm, I'm really tired of that. You know second I mean? class citizen yeah. xbox player comment even though i don't believe mm -hmm. it does come into play and when people say it you know people are going to say it umbra to be facetious and to mm -hmm. be uh, to be vengeful to, to oh you're an xbox so f you right pretty but much there are going to be some people like us that are going to be like man this is you know we're trying to have a conversation here and it kind of sucks that that uh you know the whole second class citizen thing comes into uh, I, I personally, yeah I, I personally don't feel that way i'm getting my money's worth with what i get but this yeah. is this is a, not not a really good look man it's tiresome boom and the problem i have with this and i'm, I'm gonna guess there's going to be some type of patch or something they're going to say oh well we fixed it and now we're going to bring it to it but maybe six months later so they worked out something from sure with sony and they're going to focus on that and then later they'll be like oh it was coming to game pass so they're going to get that bag too maybe i'm going to guess that's what they do yeah. we'll see but that type of practice i don't see a need to support somebody doing stuff like that yeah you know what i mean i really don't and I, I know some of our, our who brothers have complained or not complained, but mocked us and saying, well, this is why because you guys don't buy games, et cetera, et cetera. When plenty of us play buy games. Right. But this, that's the thing they use against us. And it, it's just a whole image problem, I think, for Xbox in general. It goes back to what we were talking about before we where Microsoft brought those games over to PlayStation. I'm not I'm not saying this led to this catastrophe of things or whatever, but the, the fact of it is, is that playstation is getting everything and it's on us over here where it's like oh not only will you have those taken away you're not getting this that this or that skip just final fantasy you get you're not getting some low life like not a low, low, excuse me let me not say that you're not getting some unheard of game that people barely knew of you're not even getting that and it's it's a, it's, it's just a tiresome thing of will we or won't we i'm really tired i'm pretty sure i'm not the only one that's tired of the whole the battle back and forth of will we or won't we get something it, it's it's tiresome because on playstation side it's never really that question it's always when does it come out we have to worry about it actually hitting the platform i'm just tired of it and uh so that's why it bothers me more and the, the fact that it was on the you know idea soft uh xbox Excuse, excuse me it, it bothers me even more because of that it felt it feels like they took the money and ran almost in a sense i agree i i mean it's you know what okay so fuzzy i want to bring you in on this because you know what i vibes i'm getting from this what was the dragon game that everyone that was canceled by um platinum uh scale platinum game scale bound yes thank you for the save 
I, I try to push that out from my mind because I actually really liked what it looked like, even though the guy had headphones on riding dragons. I, I would have been into that. But mm-hmm. this kind of feels scale boundy ish, if you will. Um, yeah, let's talk about it. <laughs> you know, it's it's funny. It seems like only Microsoft can try and fund a game. And then when things go south, they would automatically be seen as the bad guy, even if they were to do a little bit of pushback. They could. They really didn't. Well, I guess it was Phil didn't feel it was you know right to be in the public's eye and say, "Hey, Platinum robbed us," or they squandered the money we gave them to make games for other people. Um, but you know, eventually the truth kind of came out down the road, kind of thing. And with this situation, I almost wish that there was something in the idea at Xbox contracts, but more than likely there isn't. Uh, but if there was, I, w- I would want for them to take legal action, but. Our gaming media would probably, you know, paint Microsoft as the the bad guys and being bullies on this this small studio in Italy kind of thing. So, you know, they, Microsoft they don't do, they they don't, they don't do anything like that, right? So that's probably why they, you know, Umber said it. He goes, maybe they worked out a deal. They probably did. Well, yeah, because for them to say the the superior experience on PC and PlayStation Five, like really. Why would it be superior on PlayStation 5 uh, unless they handed you money to say something like that kind of thing? It just feels weird. Um, But, you know, in the grand scheme of things, we we see when 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 PlayStation feels you're not going to make a game up to standard, um, they pull their funding or the license. They get the license holder to do their dirty work and cancel it or or you know, tell the, the publisher, look, this ain't up to snuff. Like we saw what happened to Aspire with, you know, the, the Knights of the Old Republic. We saw what happened to, what was it, Deviation Games or something? Um, yes. Yep. So, it, and and there's word that now that there's more studios with layoffs and possible closures. The ones that did uh, Dreams or whatever was, you know, the next one on on the chopping block possibly. But, you know, PlayStation, they, they never get flack for closing a studio or or pulling funding or breaking ties with a studio like uh was this is it super massive not super massive whatever one did the whole like um the the like the tr- not the trilogies but like the um the one that's doing the remake of one of their games i forget the name of the the place but they they tried to go you know multi-plat and playstation didn't like that oh and- um yes uh oh my god the, the, they did the 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 horror games yeah uh, it, it, it's not super massive is it i i think it is but I, i'm probably mixing them up with another company or something but it, it it never fails playstation's like oh you do us wrong you're gone you're finished finito yeah. you close your doors we pull the money you're gone and the story microsoft it's like darn you got us again like I, I I don't know. I, to be honest, this game wasn't really on the radar, but you can't let this type of stuff slide. And and once again, it's on Microsoft's end when it comes to these developers that are having a hard time, if it is even the Series S. Like, more times than not, when the Series S is pointed to as being the problem, it's because they're not following the instructions on the dev kits or the tools that are in front of them. Now, bear in mind, as a dev, you want to be able to turn stuff out in a relative quick time frame, and you're used to your same routine. So breaking from that routine where there might be new technology stuff that you would have to either learn or kind of fiddle with to kind of get things going when you're so used to doing plug and play here and plug and play there, I can understand the frustration and and the fear that it could cost you more time, effort, and resources. But then... In, in some regard, that's where Microsoft really should step up. I mean, we see PlayStation sent some devs over to the Calista Protocol devs and stuff to kind of get that thing over the finish line because it looked like they were probably falling behind as far as getting that out the door. We see what happened when uh, some of the engineers were sent over to Larian to kind of help them. Like, look, idiots, you, you, you push this button and look, it does it for you kind of thing. And oh, now that works actually better for all the platforms. It's like, yeah, I, I I really wish there was a dedicated dedicated team of ninjas or whatever you want to refer to them as at Microsoft that whenever there's a studio that's kind of like where where does this plug go? Like 
send them there, teach them how to get this stuff done. I mean, I know that costs you money and resources and stuff like that, but it's like the PR fallout that you get otherwise is not worth it. It, it winds up being more detrimental than whatever it would cost to send your engineers over there. And I'm hoping you're not having to send your engineers from your current studios, but there, there's got to be a team that that is familiar with the dev kits and the design of the dev kits and how they operate that would be able to help them or form that. Like that is a worthwhile investment for them to form a team, even though it's unprecedented because you don't really, it shouldn't be a need for it, but it, it appears that, you know, whenever Microsoft tries to go that much further in technology or push the envelope, they wind up the ones being the, with egg on their face at the end because either the devs push back against it or, or are unwilling to learn it or don't feel that they, you know, it's worth the time or effort or whatever the case may be. But it, it's a bad look. Microsoft can do things differently in the background, possibly to kind yep. of avoid these situations or realize that these were probably shady scammers to some extent and be like oh you want to be on id xbox yeah we need two forms of id a background check and uh your your last six residences or something to kind of filter this kind of trash out but it is what it is yeah it again it's it's for me it's just kind of egg in the face a little bit uh dread let's bring you in on on this particular topic uh again it's it's unnecessarily negative news for Microsoft, ultimately not their fault. But I think Fuzzy does bring up some really great points about this is the kind of, you know, when, when someone makes an announcement that they're going to put a game on your platform, you got to keep up with what's going on with that game. I, I think this is a bit worse um, because it was announced as an ID at Xbox game. They took the money dread. Um, and now they're they're putting the Xbox version, which again they showed off for the first time on ID at Xbox, and they're going with the PlayStation and the PC version first, and then sloppy seconds comes the Xbox version. It's just it's just not really good. Yeah, I I don't know what you guys are talking about. Everything's fine <laughs> here. It. There's nothing wrong, nothing to see. Um, but that you know, here's here's the thing, right? Um, Scalebound could have been a good game. Was it even a game, right? We don't even know how far into it they got because they weren't even making the game. They were they were just taking the money and running. They were making their own games with the money that they were getting for, to make Scalebound. But instead of making Scalebound, they were doing other things, right? So we do know that Microsoft took it on the chin. I mean, hardcore took it on the chin. And let everybody think that they were the villains in all this on, on, on why Scalebound was canceled, right? This could be the same thing here. We don't know what's going on behind closed doors. There may have been something where they say, hey, look, even though we took money from you, even though if we said we're going to put this game on here, we are we, we just can't do it because of items one, two, 1 through 20, whatever, right? Um, that could have been a conversation that we don't know of. And Microsoft is not saying anything. Xbox is not saying anything. Nobody's saying nothing because it's not privy to us to know. It's not going to make anything any better or any worse for the game. Right. Um, so it sucks that the, 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 the basically the only person we're going to blame person console, right? The only one we're going to blame is the S. The S is the fault, but the S was also the savior for uh, Baldur's Gate. If you think about it, it helped make the game better. It, they, it helped them get through some of the issues that they were having because they made it for that. And the tricks that they figured out worked for PlayStation too, not just for Xbox. It worked for PlayStation. It worked for the PC. So you never know that there, there could be stuff going on on the side. Um, and that's, that's why sometimes it's, being too quick to judge without the proper information is you shouldn't be doing that, you know, but we should be calling out and, and putting attention to, Hey, wait a second. If you're putting, if you're putting it out here on the idea at Xbox, and now you're saying it's not going to come here for another six months. What was the point? Why did you get me all hype for this when I thought it was going to come out to the platform, but now I got to wait even longer, you know? So it, 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 it does need to put priorities back in line 
you know, if, if this was something that needs to happen, all right, you know, maybe it was something that was unforeseen. We don't know that, you know, and it, it just, let's put it in layman's terms, right? It feels like I just walked into GameStop and they said, you know, oh, you're here for a PlayStation game. And I'm like, I'm wearing an Xbox shirt. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, it feels, it feels <laughs> just like that. Um, you know, cause it, it was like, we're going to get this game and whether or not this was for you, you might be looking at it and being interested into it. Um, you might not have been hyped, but you might've been interested. What if you were hyped? Now they're saying, ah, oh, we don't have any physical copies for you, but we do have them on PlayStation. We do have this over here. You know, it's like when you go to Wendy's and you want that frosty and they're like, well, we don't have it. You don't, you don't have it. No, we have a strawberry frosty, but I, that's <laughs> no, not a frosty to me. Guys Vanilla not. frosty is not a frosty. It has to be a chocolate frosty. There is no such thing. You go to Arby's. Oh, do you want crinkle cut or do you want the curly fries? I'm here for Arby's curly fries. There are certain things that are a staple. When you go to these places, that's what you're <laughs> expecting is that staple, right? Yes. Dread, so dread, this was I'm supposed dread, to be brother, another dread, staple. Brother. Dread, my brother. Um, I think the bigger problem is that you're going to Arby's. Uh, at all i'm gonna be with Trent on this curly fries <laughs> yeah, 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 that's, that's hilarious when you have certain things there curly you know, fries and bubble guts that's what you're gonna no, get jamoka shake bro Trust oh, me. yeah the jamoka shake but but that's the thing though right you know you don't go to mcdonald's and they're like oh well we're out of big macs okay you don't go to a steakhouse and they're like oh we're out of the we're out of steaks all we have is salad no, you know, and well, that's the thing. Well, McDonald's you, you is advertise ice cream. You're going to have this here at this building, right? So you show up and you're saying, oh, we don't have this. That's the problem. You know, that's that's what, what really is the issue. It's not, you know, and like I said, we don't know what happened in the background. We don't know if there's a holdup because they didn't prep for it. How many times we said use the tools? But a lot of times they they started before those tools were out there for them to use. So you can't backtrack and be like, okay, well, we'll we'll go ahead and use this engine now. Well, what happened to the other engine? We just scrapped it, right? That's what happened with it. Halo Infinite. They scrapped it twice. Why did they do that? Why are they doing it? You know, yeah, because there was issues, so they had to start over. So, is this the same thing here where they can't utilize certain features that this can happen? And and here's the funny part, right? When it comes to CPU, it's literally the same cpu just slightly slower less memory yes i know that less memory but cpu specs just on the cpu part of it, i know it's an apu don't tell me it's an a it's an apu i i get it i know that we all know there's no separate chips but on the cpu side of that apu they're almost literally identical so why is there a hiccup here yeah, I mean, y y you're not wrong. Um, you're not wrong. I mean, look, at the end of the day, it's disappointing. Um, it is it is a smaller game. Doesn't mean it's it's irrelevant to the conversation. It does bring up a bigger conversation. For, but, uh, Crispy, I want to get your hot take on this, and we're going to move on to the potential uh, hardware uh, mentioned by Jez Corden of Windows Central. Uh, the handheld is coming, folks, uh, based on what he said. And uh, I couldn't ask for a better uh, uh, person to trust to get that news. Uh, and, it, you know, we got some quotes from Paris Lilly, who's asking for something. Uh, Jez responds. We're going to get into all of that. Crispy, let, let's talk about this game now skipping Xbox for unforeseen reasons. Did anybody know what this game was until it skipped Xbox? Nope. Nobody knew, did they? Well, isn't that interesting? It's called propaganda. It's called mind share. It's called trashing on Xbox in their own way and giving you something that you didn't know you needed. Here's the thing. There's a thing called Game Pass. And there's a thing called us calling out many times that we want games to be as best as they possibly can be when they release on Xbox. And when you have the later half of this year looking the way it is as of now with Xbox, you go and say, well, 
why do I care about this game? I didn't even know about it until everybody started hating on the fact that Xbox wasn't going to have it. Isn't that interesting? In an Xbox, I, I know about like certain games like Tunic and stuff like that. I don't, maybe I overlooked it. Maybe it doesn't matter. Okay. Everybody asks for these triple A bangers, but then you get the one A's and you look at it and say, oh, well, that's triple A if you're on PlayStation side. And Xbox gamers are like, eh, no, that's, yeah, that's a one A. Oh, we, we all bring these, these thought processes into the realm. The problem is, is that one is showing new aspects of games and the other is showing the same old over and over again. And why not just let them do that? And then all of a sudden, hey, six months later, it. You get the DLC, everything else that's on Game Pass. I don't even know about the game. I don't care. If, you, if you're if you into it, by all means, go for it. I'm looking at other stuff that's coming out. I ain't looking at that. That's me, okay? I look at Game Pass as something special. Did they, did they elevate themselves and show something to the Xbox team that said, hey, like this game could be really good. Xbox is going to go for it. We've seen it. Okay. PlayStation is going to take the release because they ain't got nothing right now. So what are we talking about here? We're talking about hating on Xbox again, even though in realism, what do we ask for them all the time? To release quality and polished content. So. If they do that at the end of the year, which apparently PlayStation has a PlayStation has everything, even though it was second slash third party at the beginning of the year, what are we talking about now? We're talking about actual first party, first party, and then some second party slash third party, just as a little, oh, hey, we're here. Yeah, we're there. I, I I just I caution people to run with this narrative that Xbox just said no. They didn't. If it's good enough, they're gonna say, okay, you can go in Game Pass. If we gotta wait four months because they want to optimize their PlayStation and get their sales, Xbox may have a contract with them that says. Look, like, if you want to prioritize, you can, but you're going into Game Pass at some point. We don't know. I didn't even hurt this game until two days yeah. ago. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, I'm just being honest. Like, yeah. and that's that's where I say, like, I, I caution people to go and say, Xbox, what are you doing? We've kind of asked them to have some quality control. Have we not? Yep. Yeah, that's true. Not every not every game deserves to be on Game Pass, and I think they're starting to see that. Now, have they invited games to fill the quota for that period of time to make Game Pass relevant? Sure. But as you see from games like Pal World and stuff like that, they are being more strategic than yes. ever, and I respect the hell out of it. And this is where you say, okay, quality quality is only $70. I think not. I'm sorry. I The games that are releasing this month in Game Pass it's been are, ridiculous. are yeah. ridiculous. And they're also, don't get me wrong, they, they're old, but they're not super old. They're yeah. games that people were questioning buying, but were like, man, this looks really good now. You know what I mean? Yeah. How dare they optimize for their... Because, let's be honest, as far as console gaming, Xbox is third place. The yes. one gravitas they have is that they've been releasing on PC for a long damn time. Yeah, All they right? absolutely have. And, and, and that's, that's where you ignore that fact because I think Xbox is going to 
release things that shouldn't be released and release them on PC and let people do mods. And this is this is where we go back to the previous topic. I heard that Capcom is destroying any modder doing anything with Dragon's yeah, Dogma. They, they also blocked and, that. They use the anti-cheating thing for... for there's, there's something that, that's out there that you can use. That can Anti-cheating use. in a single-player game? Come on! Yeah, you know it, I mean? it's, it's, it's something that... It's a, it's a program that you can use to circumvent their uh, the, the, the experience thing. Uh, so you can say, like, oh, I'm not paying for anything. Get the stuff for free uh, using this mod. And, and, and apparently they're using the anti-cheat mode. But I... I I mean, listen again, Crispy. Great points across the board. I think everyone really knocked it out of the park. I think that there is something to be said about it skipping. We don't know the details. We don't know if uh, uh, they went. You know, the studio uh, doesn't know how to program uh, for and make games for a series console. Um, I think that uh, Fuzzy did knock it out of the park where he said, "Hey, Larian, you just got to press this button," and they were like, "Oh, that's how you do that." Okay, so now we know, we figured out a, a, a good way to. Developed for everything else, including PS5, Xbox Series, and PC, thanks to the potato. Um, but look, we are an hour and 20 minutes into the show. Uh, I was going to say thank you so much for being here. I also got to remind everybody that we have someone that just donated a code for I'm going to raffle off literally right now. EJ Jackson, a very generous friend of the program, sent me the code via Xbox Live, as he's done many times before. EJ, bro, that is crazy generous of you. It is a United States uh, code. Uh, So if you do win it, I don't know uh, because, I mean, again, let me just make sure because I have my uh, game bar here. Yeah, it's for the USA. So it, this this particular code for Dragon's Dogma 2 uh, is for the United States. Uh, if you do win it, and you and like I said, please be honest. If you're not in the, if you're not in the states, kind of just let me just re re raffle it off. Uh, I'm gonna drop a hashtag into the chat right now. And uh, all you got to do is copy and paste it, and it will collect the data. I'm pasting it for you right here. It is Dragon's Dogma 2 Giveaway BWB with a hashtag. Uh, that's in the chat right now. Copy and paste it. I'll give everyone a chance. We have, according, wow, we have a lot of people here. Almost 800 people, according to StreamYards. I don't know what it says on YouTube because it's been a bit of a, 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 a discrepancy on the numbers of how many people are here. Uh, I don't know why that is. YouTube has been acting a little weird lately, but... Uh, I want to give everyone a chance to win this. Again, shout out to EJ Jackson for the very generous uh, Dragon's Dogma 2 code for Xbox. If you win it, please not only let us know that you won it, but thank him. Uh, again, I'm going to give everyone a few. I'm going to, I'm going to start the other topic, and then once we get start moving through it, I'll run the picker uh, on um, – on, uh, on um, stream yards and we will uh we will uh you know we'll get the draw right now we have 18 and en- 20 entries i want to wait till we have maybe around 50 to kind of really give everyone a chance to do it uh but i do want to move on of course ladies and gentlemen to what i was talking about now jess corden uh has been talking on the xbox too as well on social media that there are some exciting things happening uh, for Xbox, this this is where we get into the uh, the topic of it's time to get excited about Xbox again. Uh, and I really think that uh, a lot of channels, including mine, have moved away from what's what we're here for, and that's to to be fun, to have fun, to laugh, to get excited about gaming again. And I do want to offer an apology for I don't want to be negative. I hate being negative. There's been a lot of negativity out there. Sometimes you got to report on it. Some of the some some of the stuff we can just move away from which we're going to get back to doing on this channel. We're going to get back to having fun, talking about gaming. Uh, and uh, again, uh, I, I just want, if everyone, if anyone, because I've gotten some DMs from people and they kind of feel like the, the channel swerved a little bit. And sometimes we don't see it as, as, as producers, as content creators, as managers. Sometimes we only see what's in front of us. And when people kind of talk to you, and, I, I, and I've gotten some DMs from people I consider to be a extension of my family. Okay, boom. And I want to, you know, don't get offended, which I don't because I love criticism. Uh, the channel kind of feels like it went a little bit this way. Maybe you want to steer it back this way. So just a quick uh, channel overview, folks. 
if you've if you subscribed and you tuned in because you were positive and were fun, we're going to get back to that. Uh, and we're going to start right now with this particular topic. Now, Jez Corden, Windows Central, Xbox 2, he actually was having a conversation on the socials, as he does, and um, he simply wrote, I'm hyped for the future of Xbox. And Colt Eastwood, you know, obviously everyone knows who Colt is, a uh, good friend of this channel, great friend of the community. He says, I'm cautiously optimistic, but I'm hyped for the games more than anything. And Jez simply says, I'm hyped for hardware, right? So Jez, who has done some secret me you know, missions recently, well, I, I trust Jez. So he put out a tweet the other day, and I'm going to pull that tweet up for you right now. And it is responding to Paris Lily. Of course, everyone knows Paris Lily of, 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 of XCast, right? You know him from Gamertag Radio. He's been on this show quite a few. We love Paris, right? Paris said this openly, and, and this is just his tweet. This is it. He's just going out there, and he's putting it out there into the socials. And he's, Paris said this, I want an Xbox handheld. It's time. And I 1,000% agree. He says, as much as I like my ROG Ally, portable hardware that plays all of my Xbox games with a simplified UI and not having to worry about system settings with improved bat battery life. In other words, a pick up and play experience. And I got to be honest with you folks, that is me and my mindset literally one to one. Like we're right here. Um, I have a ROG Ally. I use it sparingly. I'm not going to front. Um, it is very PC heavy. I'm not a PC guy. I, I find it to be not confusing. I understand the ins and outs of it. I don't like it. I want a grab the handheld, push the power button, see an Xbox logo, my games. Move it, you move the stick over, pick a game, play. That's that's what I need in my life. I don't want driver problems. I don't want sound issues. I don't want, it's not loading in this. I have to move over to here. I have to go to my, I don't want any of that stuff. I want to simply, like my Switch, press the power, press the A button a couple of times to get to the home screen, and we're ready to rock and roll. And Jez Corden responded with three words, folks. Three words. You'll get one. To me, that is as confirmation as you could possibly get. So Jez was uh, also, right after that, uh, a, a, uh, a, um, an ex-user by the name of Reggie uh, asked, would it be native, uh, would there would be a native one or more in the line of the PlayStation Portal? Both would be fine with me, mostly use the Portal when the daughter or wife are watching TV, which is what a lot of people actually use the PlayStation Portal for. They're on the couch. They're hanging out with the family. They're watching something. You want to play your game. And everyone is still you know, spending time together. And again, Jez Corden, just one word, native. And that's Fuzzy Belvedere, Mr. Technicality. Of, if anyone knows anything about the back end of PCs, it's this man right here. When you say native, that says that A... We're going to be able to download stuff onto this thing. We're going to be able to have, it's going to have some sort of onboard memory. Maybe it's going to be SD card, uh, uh, you know, related, which those are cheap. If not, maybe it also incorporates the cards that, you know, the, 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 the Seagate cards that you have in your back of your consoles now, which I have two, I have a two gig, I mean, a two terabyte and a one terabyte and the one in the room. So I'm good. Those are a little pricey. What are your thoughts on again? It's is it you know a thousand percent confirmation? Jez is not coming out and saying a handheld coming out this uh, tomorrow, but it does go in line with the announcement at the business meeting that, of course, Sarah Bond said we got exciting hardware to show off this fall. Yeah. Let's talk about it. Well, I'd like to start off with over the past couple of years, I've been. And, and this is not like an NDA thing. I, I've I've been privy to some surveys. Now, the surveys are a little different than the case study stuff. Those are NDA'd. Um, but the surveys always seem to generate around or, or, you know, focus on some sort of portable device, much like, you know, a Nintendo Switch. 
Um, they would ask questions like, would you be more willing to do uh, gaming on the go that way as opposed to your phone and things like that? Um, and it it was it seemed weird or kind of strange two years ago when they were asking that stuff. And and then like a year later, another survey, similar, similar type questions. But I, I've, I've heard some things as far as they've they've toyed around with the idea. And shortly after the Steam Deck came out, I was kind of surprised that they didn't do like a design for Xbox edition, much like they did for the uh, the BNO headset that was like $500 or something like that. Yes. I was, I was yes. kind of surprised they didn't do like a steam deck, uh, you know, Xbox edition, uh, you know, right around the same price, but with the, you know, game pass app already installed and, and maybe uh, a way to have where anything that you bought in a Microsoft store that was first party would automatically be able to access uh, on that device type of thing. Uh, but it, it's, probably the next best progressive step that Xbox can do. We've seen how well the switch is done. Now, I don't think they'll be able to quite do those same type of numbers, but there is a, there is a market for these handhelds, i.e. with the PC handhelds. Like I showed my Steam Deck earlier. There's ROG Allies out there. There's Legion Goes out there. there. There's a ton of different ones. Some of them are the streaming only like the portal or like the, the LG one from like a year or so ago, but there are ones where you'd be able to play natively. And that to me makes the most sense. Something that would be on par with like a, the equivalent of like a, a portable series S. And I know people give the series S a hard time, uh, you know, because of the developers don't always push it to its limit or, or unlock all the features for it. But having it where it can be almost interchangeable code for what the PC version of the game is and still have it playable in the console like experience, I think would be the best way to go. And if they're able to make it so your console games can play or emulate as if it was being played on console, I think that would make it easier for some of the third party publishers to be okay with you having, you know, GTA that you may have bought on your Xbox one or on your series X or S and then playable on this handheld, uh, even though it's kind of like a, a PC slash console hybrid. And there's also been work in the background where Microsoft has made like an extremely light version of Windows. Um, and there was one even being floated in a beta where it had more of like a an Xbox UI uh, skin to it. So it felt more like it was like if you've if anyone out there listening is uh, used the Steam Deck, you'll know that that's basically like the Steam OS or like almost like big picture mode, but you know, you know, scaled down for like a handheld. So having something that would have that console feel where it's easy to navigate your games, easy to start and play a game, uh, access your saves in the cloud, have it where you can, you know, purchase games, install games and things like that. A lot of those things have been working kind of in the background with Windows um, and all they just need to do is make a device. And we've, we've heard some other stuff where the uh, uh, Surface team has been working with, you know, uh, Jason Ronald's team. He, he obviously got a promotion, uh, I think, like a year or so ago uh, to more of like a head engineering position. So there, there's definitely something that they're cooking up. And I would say the Surface team is more of like the, the packaging aspects. Much like if you look at like the Series X, because the there was some Surface team involvement in that, they already like Jason Ronald's team already had the idea as far as the hardware uh, for the internals, and then it was more of like, well, how do we get this into a form factor? And then that's when they came up with the basically like the two motherboard type of uh, setup. So having something where the Surface team can kind of help them with the packaging aspect, keeping it like in Steam Deck size range. Uh, making it cost efficient or, or you know, reasonable as far as the components so they can keep the price low enough where it's it's accessible for most gamers, I think is definitely something in our, our near future. And if they can find a way to make it dockable, even like the Steam Deck, you don't have to have like their official dock as long as you have it on something where it can charge and that or plug into the wall and then have like an HDMI or like a, a monitor cable hooked to it, you'll be able to hook it up uh, to another screen if you want a, a slightly larger screen to play. And you could either use the actual device as a controller or, you know, 
connect your your controller via Bluetooth or something to that effect. But I I have a feeling that there's something in the works. There's been too many things aligning in the background when it comes to that. But the technology is there. Um, the only question now is if they do go full Series S level, the battery output might be the questionable mark where you might have to turn things down just slightly in uh, portable mode because like the, the Series S runs primarily for 1080. You'd have to deal with kind of like a 720, but on that smaller screen, 720 isn't going to be as noticeable in comparison to like if you were to have that 720 hooked to the TV, which in dock mode, then it can upscale because it's plugged in yep. up to the 1080 without much problem. So there, there's there's a lot of stuff that AMD has kind of moved forward since the release of the series consoles that would allow for something portable like a Series S to happen. It's just a matter of, is it going to be three, three hours battery life, four hours? I mean, could we squeeze more by doing the cap at 30 frames? Yeah, we, we could probably do all that. And if they can make it easier for the end user not to have to fiddle with things like you do on the Steam Deck or the ROG Ally, yeah. I think that would be an easy sell for, for Xbox. And fingers crossed, we, we hear something about that either in June or sometime between June and the holidays. Because yep. I want to probably set some, some money aside for that, you know, starting now. I am there day one. Uh, give me a native uh, console-like experience for a handheld that is not... Tech, you don't you need you don't need a degree uh to to like like uh, like for instance like the rock alley i mean i i it's fine i i you know it, it you run game pass games but what you don't run is your games that yeah. is a problem same thing with the steam deck uh yeah no sure if you have games on steam you can run those but mm -hmm. as an xbox player what we want is like i have over a thousand games uh, I actually just started the Aliens game. I, I I saw the trailer for Alien Requiem, uh, and uh, that looks freaking phenomenal. So I was like, uh, the, the new Alien film looks really, really good. Um, so I was like, okay, uh, I definitely got to get into this. And I said, you know, I never beat the Aliens Isolation game, and it looks really good on the Series X. Like, holy crap. I took some mm -hmm. pictures. I put it up last night. I'm like, wow, this game looks good. So I started playing that, and of course, Dra Dragon's Dogma comes out. And speaking of which, Hargi Chani in the chat. Not only does he drop a five dollars super chat, he has he's given away two worldwide codes. So we're giving away three copies of Dragon's Dogma. I did not even see this coming. The generosity from this community is unbelievable. So I'm going to draw because we have. Let me see how many uh, we have. Okay, so we have 49 entries. Uh, before I do the next drawing, uh, I'm going to go back to the chat and I'm going to retype in the uh, what you got to put in here. Uh, hold on just a second. Hashtag Dragon's Dogma 2 Dogma 2. Quickly, folks, uh, while we, we get ready to, uh, you know, continue this conversation, I, I want to want to bring Infinite Umbra in on it. Uh, quickly, do you know? There's there's the hashtag, Dragon's Dogma Two Giveaway BWB. Throw that into the chat, uh, you know, as fast as you can, so we can do the the giveaways. Uh, and I'm going. We have 53 entries, 54, so that's good. I'm going to draw the first one, folks. Over 50 is great. Um, here we go. First winner is going to be live on the air. Jax82. Jax82, uh, do me a favor. I don't know how you can get in touch with me. DM me. Um, you know, let me know in the chat whether or not you need an international code, or because we have one of one USA code and two international codes. So um, I will was that? Hargeet actually put it in the chat. So oh, yes. So oh he, so oh, he dropped yeah, it into he, the he chat. He already dropped it in the chat. Yep. Gotcha. So. Okay. So Hargeet, thank you so much for that. So okay. So this is all right. So this is the one winner that I'm that I'm going to draw. I didn't know he dropped it into the chat. So again, Hargeet, thank you for the generosity, brother. That is crazy nice of you. Jax82, you are the winner of the drawing for Dragon's Dogma 2. It is a USA code. Uh, hopefully, you are here in the country. Uh, the way you can you can you can make use of the code. Uh, let me know in the chat real quick if if if, uh, 
if if, if that works for you. Uh, if you obviously you're you're here in the states, so we can get you that code, and you can either email me, or I can email you, or hit me up on Xbox Live. We'll we'll definitely figure it out. Um, Anthony and Umbra, um, let let's talk about it, man. Uh, uh, a handheld that's native, uh, an Xbox branded handheld. Um, I've been I've been banging the drum for a while. Obviously, there are handhelds. There are a lot of them out there. As a matter of fact, Jez Corden was reviewing the one that you kind of move, you can take off the handles like the Switch. He really liked that one, but ultimately he went back to the Rock Ally. Rock Ally is a great piece of tech. I still own it, uh, but I don't use it as much because, again, I can't play all of my Xbox games. It's only Xbox Game Pass. And um, it's, for me anyway, it's, it's very PC heavy. I just want a plug and play experience pick up and play there's my games there's my xbox dashboard no side loading no shenanigans let's talk about it infinite are you there sir he's on mute oh you're on mute uh infinite did he fall asleep um, maybe maybe he did fall asleep <laughs> I, I don't know folks he worked midnights yeah um, so I was being serious, but yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jax82 is in the U.S. So, brother, thank you so uh, thank you for that, Dreadpool. You know what? Okay, so while we wait for him to either come back, maybe he stepped away for a second, and I missed the message. Uh, Dread, let, let, let's let's talk about it because you're you're on the go a lot. Um, and uh, XCloud as as good as it is, it's not great. Um, I'm all about the native experience. Uh, do you want this handheld, and do you want it this year? All right, so let's let's kind of go backtrack a little bit, and and I'll fill into this answer here. All right, uh, so we got to get perspective, right? Um, we all know I went to Hawaii, yada yada yada, but I brought my Switch with me, right? And you guys know I, I haven't been a Game Boy type of guy. I haven't, you know, I, I play the Switch docked all the time, um, but because with my daughter, we were like, let's bring the Switch. It'll keep her occupied. Um, and yes, I did not take the switch away from her. <laughs> she was able to play while we were on the plane. But that being said, think about this, right? You're able to travel. And as much traveling as I do, I was sitting back thinking, wow, I really want an S. I really want an S because I don't want to bring my ex onto the plane. I I'm not going to put it in the suitcase uh, down below. There's no way I'm going to let that thing out of my sight. But if I had an S, it'd be easier to travel with. So it made sense. But again, I, I'm not that type of guy to play unless I'm playing in front of the TV. You know what we did? We had one day in that trip where we didn't do anything but sit in front of the TV. We docked the uh, the switch to my sister-in-law's TV. Um, she actually had the switch. So we were actually between her playing on her switch portable and we would dock our Xbox into her dock. Or uh, I'm sorry, Xbox. Our switch into her dock and play or we would pull ours out and then she would dock hers and play you know so and we you know the three of us took turns just playing and having a good time um it's, so it, it, it's it's funny that again i had something portable but really didn't do anything with it unless it was docked and i did play um on uh x cloud um what was it juice on I played that um, up in the room. I went, went upstairs, had my, I brought my controller with me. So I was like, well, just in case and I thought ahead of time. So thinking of that, it made, it made sense. It, it worked fine. So whether or not this comes out, it does it really affect anybody. Not really, but you know what it's going to affect. I can't be on my phone to do anything. If I want to sit down and play, um, I was able to play the switch, you know, portably if I wanted to. Um, but it, it made it easier because I didn't need to connect to to Wi-Fi or, or the uh, any any kind of internet to, to be able to play the game, you know. So I had to do that with the cloud. If I was on the plane, I couldn't do nothing. I wasn't going to pay thirty dollars for twenty minutes of connectivity. That made no sense to me. Um, that was kind of roughly the price. But the switch, I was able to play. So doing something like this makes actual, makes actual sense. It's a smaller console that I can, you know, and, and I like Fuzzy's thing because I, I want to dock it. I definitely want it to be portable and I want it to be docked. And my my interpretation is 
not only do I want it to be docked, I want the docked itself to amplify certain features like better resolutions, better, you know what I'm saying? More so than, than what the switch is doing now. I, I reference the switch a lot because it's the plug and play from the manufacturer. You just put the game in and you start playing. You don't have to worry about other things other than the basic updates that you got to do. But other than that, you just start playing. You don't have to manipulate anything. You don't, you know, like you have to do with the, uh, uh, the other uh, PC handhelds, uh, smaller, lighter. All right, cool. So in, in that aspect, I want to see this thing. I want to see this, this, what do we call it before? Uh, X boy, right? <laughs> That you guys remember that, right? They called it an X boy at one point in time. Um, so but yeah, it, I want to see this thing. It would be nice to see it to be almost, if not as powerful, at least as the S. That, that would be the, the, the most beneficial thing. And then obviously, if you're in handheld mode, you don't need all that extra power. You know, right. you're only looking on a smaller screen, so you can reduce that power. That's what I'm saying. If you really want that type of power, put it in the home base. Make sure that the portable can handle it because you want the battery life. You 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 want you know that's the whole point of portability. You you know what I mean? What's the point of playing for 15 minutes then you got to charge it up again because the battery died? So yeah, um, this this would be a great thing. Um, I don't see it as a fad because that's the direction we're already going. If you look at all the the portable ones, even the PS uh, portable uh, or whatever the not portable. The, the uh, uh, PlayStation, um, well, it's, it's, it, I mean, it's, yeah, portal, the PlayStation the portal. portal. There you go. I got stuck on the PSP and that's, <laughs> well, <I laughs> but mean, even with that, you know what I'm saying? Same what, what good, so. what, what good is it to, to, again, for me, it wouldn't be a big deal. Cause I wouldn't play it. I would rather play on the TV. My daughter, she wanted to, she could do it. Not a big deal. So it's not a, an issue in that aspect if it's a local play because it's connecting but just saying it would be nice if you're going to have something like that that's going to be portable let it be portable let's let's go outside and not have to worry about connecting to the internet um, i mean if you can cool if you can't we could still play the game you don't have to worry about it you're not limited to what you can do with the as you are with the portal and i know the portal can do more than a lot of people make it out to to do but again, it's very simplistic for what it is. You know, we want it to be simple and accessible, you know, and, and kind of go from there. I think that's the kind of the best roundabout way. It's it's not going to be vaporware. It's not going to be um, this was it the PSVR two where they're stopping production because they overpriced it. You know, they, they hopefully it's not. Hopefully they don't do those type of mistakes. Hopefully they learn from those mistakes. And make this thing portable and accessible and just easy to play, easy to manage, and not have to worry about the extra nuances that a lot of the PC market has to do with the with their portables. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I agree. I I I think this there, there's there is a there is a world where this thing and hold on, folks, let me just uh get you some new gameplay over here, some division gameplay. Uh, this is Division One, one of my favorites. I, I, I like two, but I love love Division One. Uh, and of course, Fuzzy's a big fan of that. I think that there is a world where this exists. Um, the PlayStation Portal, Portal. Again, I've held it. I've used it. It's the screen is incredibly impressive. Um, but for what it is, there's no onboard memory. It's it's for use for you. Uh, you the best case scenario. <laughs> Is whether you maybe you're sitting on the bowl, maybe you're hanging out with the uh, with the family, maybe your wife is watching one of her things, or your kids are watching, and you want to play a game. That's awesome if you're in the same place. I don't know about taking it with you. Maybe you know, uh, I don't know what like if you took it to a hotel and and you were able to get it to work with your with your console. That's great. I'm I'm more of uh, of the idea of I, I'd rather have it native where I could download games to it. Uh, and it's going to work like a traditional handheld would. Uh, Crispy, let's let's bring you in on the conversation, brother. This is, again, we're just putting like these little things together. You know, Sarabon last month said that they had some exciting hardware that they were going to uh, unveil uh, this fall. 
what you know does that mean it's coming out this fall or does that means that they're going to unveil I, I i don't know i honestly don't know and what does the fall mean does that mean that maybe at the game awards they drop this potentially um jez corden putting out little nuggets answering some questions paris Lee putting it out there into the ether that he this is what he wants i mirror him one to one that is exactly my ideal xbox portable let's talk about it let's talk about it for a second let's think about this just for a second and understand that if you don't read through the tea leaves you don't see what they're doing Mm -hmm. and so partnerships right we all ignore them we you, you see the articles they're there i just looked them up you have intel That's making the chipset for probably the next Xbox console. To be honest with you, Intel is on its its last legs. They got to do something bold. All right? So Microsoft says, you know what? Before that, we already were partnered with AMD. Correct? Everybody everybody know that they're still partnered with AMD? Does everybody understand it? That's... That's what I'm talking about here. So then they go and say, okay, um, ARM, we see something there. Yep. What you got? Because remember the articles. Remember, we talked about this. All right. Then you have Intel saying, we're going to make the chipsets. Okay. Through articles, maybe they're wrong. Haven't seen anything otherwise. Okay. Then you see NVIDIA. NVIDIA is is putting their realm into AI more than anybody. And they could rival Microsoft. Why would they partner with them? As far as money-wise, NVIDIA is good. I'm just saying. Nobody's questioning what they are capable of. They're partnering with Microsoft? Why? Isn't that interesting? You ever heard of the, the the Trojan horse, as we like to call it? The one thing that everybody thinks can't be done, but can be done. Why would you partner with not only chip manufacturers, but AI um, integration and, and all these other manufacturers? They, they do multiples. Why would you do that? Hey, we'll fund your R&D. We'll do it, but you're going to court us for what you think is the future, and we will have our own interpretation of what we think is the future. Microsoft I, has always done this. They sure have. Well, always my, ahead of the curve, sometimes to their detriment there, for the crispy bomb, but yeah. this is one of those instances that I think you're because wrong. Because they always try to do it themselves. Yes. Now they're asking everybody else. Think about what I just said. These are the largest chip and AI manufacturers you've ever seen. Okay. And Microsoft is one of them. And they're still partnering with them. Isn't that crazy? There's something there that we are not seeing. And that's where I go and look at Jez and I say, this dude knows something. This dude knows something that we don't know. And he knows something to the fact where he's going to go to somebody. Paris has a following. People love him or hate him. But you look at what he said. It was out in the ether. And Jez said, you're going to get it. But how do you do that? How do you make the switch irrelevant? How do you partner with Nintendo? And you have well, yeah. Interesting. That is ruthless, okay? And some people will hate it. But this is what we've been asking for. If Nintendo's gonna, you know, say, hey, you know what, you guys got it. We're gonna we're gonna continue. We're gonna our new hardware is going to be Microsoft isn't gonna say nothing because they are partnered with them. Okay, but if if you took that dock and actually had you know computing power in it. 
it would actually be something on a Samsung TV. Another partner. Oh, LG. Oh, they're partnering with them. Why would they do that? To take over the world. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, and that's that's something that we all hate in, in our bones. But who better at this point? Do you want Sony charging you for all of these little things that shouldn't matter? When we've had the ladder, if we're on Xbox, I mean, if Game Pass is the realm, and and they didn't go to VR, even though Phil lied, he did, and he said what he said. High fidelity VR, we all remember it, but he walked it back. And how's it look now? Looks pretty smart, don't it? He walked it back the way he did. That's okay. He's a gamer. He says, you know what? Gamers don't really want this. I don't care what anybody says. Like the Meta Quest is doing pretty well, but they have a partnership with Microsoft. Did everybody forget that? Like we all forget all the things that have been said in articles, and everybody's like, oh, it's no big deal. Oh, it's no big deal. Oh, that's no big deal. Nothing's a big deal until it actually happens in front of your face. And then once it happens, you're going to be like, well, this is actually kind of good. This is actually what I always ever wanted. Oh, I could I could put 1440p on my TV and have, you know, a console that runs 1080p. I think we're farther than that. That's my opinion. That doesn't mean it's going to happen, but right. I think we are farther than that. I think 4K is so prevalent. Um, frames per second is so prevalent that if they come out with a handheld, I think they're going to want to be locked 30, which for a handheld at even 1440p would be it's still going to really look amazing good. on your screen. I, <laughs> you know I, what I mean? So it, 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 I, think, I think they're playing a different game. They're just not going to tell us. They tell us enough, to be honest. We hate it or love it. You know what I mean? So we hate or love so much, but all of these partnerships they've done, I feel, are for a reason. Is it to court them to purchase more and, and get into the aspect? I don't know. I think an announcement could happen this year. Will it be this year that the actual console comes? I don't think so, but that's yeah, well, that's my opinion. By letting people know about it, that's for sure. Well, they want they they know they screwed up. They know they did. I think they do. I really do. I truly, in my bones, think Phil was not only like he felt the same way about the the realm of the leaks and everything else as he did about Redfall, and he he felt like he hurt the gamer because he's a gamer himself, and he 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 plays on Xbox probably more than most people and he he just he doesn't know how to so what he's doing is what the company wants but at the same time he sees the end game and he sees this openness to it and it might be just gaming involved but i have no problem with that we've we've i mean didn't everybody just see that apple is getting sued by the doj Oh like, yeah, they're they're in a yeah. They're, they're in that, in now a it's not just it's not Apple's now the target. They're gonna they're gonna ignore Mike. Watch, all of a sudden FTC is gonna walk away. I bet you because they're going after Apple because they do have a majority. Let's be honest, they have a 50-50 with Google and Samsung. I mean seriously. So that's an argument that should be had. Let's have that argument. But Microsoft's, you know, they've been doing gaming for years, but they're doing it a little different, and you're giving them ish. So what do you want? What do you want from them? They're gonna sit down and and shut up and let them do their thing. They're gonna go through the court system and do everything. We're talking about a single entity. We're not talking about a majority of anything. And that's what we're talking about with Apple. And I agree with it. I am an Apple user. I agree with it. By all means, allow you know all these other companies to come onto your, your 
Play Store and whatever you want to call it. Like, seriously, like, you can't look at what Microsoft's doing right now and saying you have to hate it. It's just, that's that's their navigation. That's what they do. They understand the gravitas of the situation. They want gaming to be prevalent now. We've seen that with spending almost $80 billion. What are we talking about here? Yes, they were technically way behind and way too forward, one or the other. I think they're in a great realm right now. And they yeah, need to I continue. Agree. They need to continue to innovate. And if it's AI, I mean, I see AI ads all the time. I'm, I'm actually, I'm concerned, but I'm also impressed. Like, yeah. it's one of those things like, hey, like, how do we, how do we innovate ourselves? How do we be better as a society? And, and that's something that I think, you know, Microsoft has a better understanding because they do control the majority of our social aspect in a way because they have the platform. Most people use Windows. And yet that is be being superseded by Xbox. They look at Xbox now as like the end all be all. And sometimes they need the argument. And we're having the argument right now. I ain't saying that we're, we're perfect. What I'm saying is, is that if you don't have the argument, it's going to go one way bad or the other way bad in anybody's yep. eyes. At least if you have the argument and you say, hey, regulators, you should look at AI, even though they're partnering with NVIDIA, who seems to be farther along with AI than a lot of people realize. And they are a trillion dollar company, by the way. Well, look, Just at the end that. of the day, I think what Microsoft is doing is they're they're, they're kind of like putting planting their seeds everywhere. I, I don't know ultimately what they're going to do with this handheld. All I'm asking for is exactly what Paris asked for. It needs to be native. It needs to be pick up and go. It, 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 what I what what I envision, and of course, I want to thank nearly 800 people that are here in the chat right now. So thank you so much for that. We're going to get to the last super chats. We're going to get everyone out of here. I think Umbra might have fallen asleep i tried to call him because we are friends outside of the podcasting game he didn't answer he works midnights folks so if he did fall asleep don't condemn him he works midnights damn you know how hard it is to come out of uh yeah, yeah, yeah dread when you have oh, one of these <laughs> when you have one of these <laughs> they could be used as a good pillow to sleep with too yeah in indeed absolutely shout outs to the long house gaming podcast you know those fine gentlemen over there that's a new podcast that has exploded on the scene with supernova the black viking and of course the black skellington they do multiple shows a week they just had one the other day with randall thor i don't know who the second guest was because it's on my queue to listen to they're in the chat um big thank you to everyone's here let me let me just catch funny super chats over here and then we'll get everyone out uh we have the collector drops a very generous two dollar super chat and he says can crispy be a guest every day you rock bro so thank you so much for the compliment and of course thank you for the generosity i am not uh, a guest though on this show no, he, he, yeah he's he, he's here he, this is his house uh j mac drops a very generous two dollar super chat and says xbox plate is so full that it's a non-issue and I, and i think he's referring to that game not coming to xbox and he's not wrong but i just think that it's it's just an ugly look i, I just hate seeing that when Xbox has millions of players, and we do matter, folks. We do matter. Uh, hey, Blinken drops a very generous $5 super chat and says, he says, how do ponies use the PlayStation controller joysticks without their hooves clacking together and making a <laughs> making a ruckus? You know what, dude? I think that's a what question that we're not going to have the answer to. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Hey, Blinken, for the generous $5 super chat. Uh, I, I hear it. I hear it. It's, it's, oh, it's, it's, don't do that. It's, oh, it's not good. It's word. definitely not good. <laughs> um, El Monte drops a very generous additional $5 super chat and says, remember, Quantum Era developers said the same thing, and their game was trash on PlayStation. Yeah, they did say uh, that, and that game wound up not being right. so good. He's he's not wrong. And, of course, again, once again, thank you to Hargi Chani for not dropping one. Not dropping two, but also dropping a super chat, folks. He gave away 
two codes. Uh, oh, yeah, real quick, just because I want to make sure I'm not getting scammed. Jax82, you're still here. Do me a favor and just confirm that you did message me on Xbox. And once I have that confirmation from you, brother, I'll send the code. It's literally copy and pasted. Again, I, someone just said, hey, I'm Jax82. I don't know the name, and I don't want to get scammed. So if you did, um, obviously, okay, that was me. Okay, thank you, Jax82. I'm going to send it over to you right now. Um, listen, let's get to the let's get to the outros. We'll start first with Fuzzy Belvedere because obviously, poor Infinite Umbra, who wasn't supposed to be here, but he, you know, he just decided to jump on. I think he might have felt fallen asleep. Uh, Fuzzy Belvedere, sell your brand, kind sir. Tell everyone for the best be best place for anything and everything in the racing genre where they can subscribe to your YouTube channel and more importantly, follow you on social media. As always, thank you for having me on here. It was awesome being on here with you guys this morning. Thanks to everybody in the chat for interacting with us and checking us out. We greatly appreciate it. Please hit the like and subscribe if you haven't already. It always, uh, every little bit helps. Um, and we, we definitely appreciate you taking the time to, to listen to us over, you know, gaming news, our, our common hobby that we all have. For those that want to hear any of my other rambles and rants on anything gaming related, you can find me on uh the app formerly known as Twitter or X or whatever you want to call it now at fuzzy underscore Belvedere. You can also find me on YouTube. Just do a search for fuzzy Belvedere and you'll be able to find my videos. And for other places that you can find me later on tonight, Xbox ultimate on fun speculations channel at 10 PM Eastern standard time tonight, uh, the shop podcast on PTK Blam's channel tomorrow at 9 PM Eastern standard time. Once again, on PTK Blam's channel. And then on Sunday for Pixelated Echoes, just do a search for Pixelated Echoes on YouTube. You'll be able to find that channel with uh, me and 3-Bit. And we're on around 8 uh, p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then hope to see everybody right back here for Xbox Lunch Break Special, 12 noon on Monday afternoon. Look forward to seeing you there. Thank you so much for being a part of it. Uh, definitely appreciate you being a part of the show each and every week, dude. Obviously, it is a big deal to have you here. Uh, I'm going to send that code over in a second, Jax82. Let me just continue with these super chats. I mean, with the, the outros. Dreadpool, please, by all means, sell your brand, brother. Tell everyone for where they can subscribe to Breaking Bread with Dread. Find out what else you got going on. And more importantly, where can people follow you on social media? Yes, uh, thank you. You can find me everywhere um it's uh dreadpool it's either o's or zeros depending where you go but youtube is o's so if you go to linktree.com uh it's dreadpool uh those are o's and all the links everywhere you go all the links will be associated with other uh areas of social media um so twitter is actually uh, uh, zeros instead of o's but you can find me on tiktok uh, i i've given up on hover <laughs> But uh, I still get some views out there. So it's just it, one of those things. You got you kind of go too far out there, and sometimes you got to bring it back in. Um, and then Game Beyond the Box Sunday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, here every Friday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern. And I almost forgot, Sunday mornings, uh, Good Morning Xbox on Axel's channel. Nice. Uh, Axel yes. 1324. He does the iconic video games podcast. And then I'll drop a link. I got a new shirt out. It's called the... There we go. Robotic Dreadite Love. So nice. I'll drop that link later on. But uh, yeah, definitely, if you guys want to check any of that stuff out, uh, I, I'm still work. I have a, another interview I am currently trying to schedule while I'm also editing the old one. So yeah, de definitely check out Breaking Bread with Dread. Um, there's, there's a lot of cool stuff out there. So definitely, uh, three, if you like 360 views, if you want to move the screen around or use your phone and actually move it around like that, I've got the, those videos out there. So if you want to see stuff like that, cool. I got some hiking stuff, traveling. Nice. Uh, it's just not gaming. It's, it's a whole lot of everything. So definitely appreciate you guys for checking it out. Love hanging out with you guys here on the pod, uh, on the panel. And again, thanks boom for letting me host while you were you know, playing Superman. Thank and, you for, for doing a great job, brother. So I pre super appreciate that. And uh, thanks to Infinite Umbra for waking up from his uh, snoring. <laughs> and um, I, I got his links popping up as soon as he does his outro. 
Yes, yes. Hey, listen, um, bro, appreciate you being here, brother. Obviously, listen, you know, you work midnights, like I explained to everybody. Uh, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't get your your your, your takes on. I, I don't remember. Oh, about the the handheld. Uh, do you want your a dedicated handheld that you can play all your Xbox games? Because uh, this is what Paris was asking, and Jez Corden responded by saying, "You'll get that," so meaning suggesting that it is it is only a matter of time before they announce it. Yeah, Jess has been talking about the handheld thing for a while, which led me to believe that he knew something we didn't know. Yep. It also goes kind of hand in hand with that rumor that we heard about Xbox having supposedly two SKUs, one being kind of a handheld that you can put hybrid, on a, if you will. Yeah, yes. hybrid, right? Kind of like a switch esque type of thing where you can take it on the go and then put it on the dock. So I believe that's gonna happen exactly as we heard it's gonna happen, but which is dope. And I do love the idea of it. I love my rock ally, so I love the, the thought of having a dedicated device to play games natively on it straight through Xbox, you know, Game Pass, whatever it may be, straight on the device. So 100 percent I'm down for that. Yeah, absolutely. But okay, awesome. that, that said, yes, uh, let's yeah. get to your outros, brother. Talk about it where because obviously you did a show last night, you and Danny. Um mm -hmm. uh, again, you know, you do a show called The Fix each and every week. Uh you, Danny, and sometimes you bring in some guests. Talk about it. Where can people subscribe, continue to help you grow the channel, and more importantly, follow you on social media? Indeed. Of course, you guys can find me on Twitter, X, Infinite Umbra, or Umbra Infinite. You'll find me either way. You can find me in the land of dreams. Uh, no, but seriously. <laughs> uh, as far as the fix, of course, you guys can find us there Thursdays at uh, 8 o'clock Eastern. Um, and, yeah, uh, come by and show us some love. I, I would... Uh, Oh, thank you, Dredd. Dredd already put my, my channel there, so you guys can go there if you have not subscribed. And come by and support a brother, and brothers in this case, if you could. Uh, sometimes me and Danny decide to do it solo, and then uh, sometimes we'll have a guest come by. So, you know, it's up in the air sometimes. But, yeah, come by. Thank you guys uh, for those who do some support us right now. And, uh, yeah, thank you, Boom, of course, for having me coming through to get today. And thank you, gentlemen, for, for tolerating me and my mr sandman who took me away <laughs> from you all for a moment but yeah <laughs> ah that's all right but listen these things happen oh, yeah, we, we're happy to have you here oh. obviously your opinion matters so uh appreciate thank you so much for it, that umbra definitely appreciate it looking forward to what you guys are going to continue to do on the fix and last in no way least ladies and gentlemen crispy bomb who by the way is an exclusive to double barrel gaming as he says all the time crispy where can people follow you on social media what else you got going on there dude at Chris Baum on X, not Twitter anymore. Sorry, people. <laughs> um, Chris Baum, 28 Xbox Live. Generally, you could find me on Breakfast of Boom, Friday, 10 a.m., but Every not night next again. week. Not next week. It, it's not going to happen. I got to work. I yeah. mean, it is Easter. Yeah. I mean, if, if you are that type of person, I'm going to tell you right now, just if you have kids, let them go do an Easter egg hunt. Let them do something, something that you know, it's out of the realm. Even if they don't like it at a period of time, when they go and grab candy out of an egg, they're gonna love Fun. it. I did that as a kid. I, loved it. Loved <laughs> I mean, it. I loved it. Um, but I could show up Monday. You never know. Xbox lunch break special. So. Indeed, indeed. Uh, well, yes, listen, I'm we'll... off, so you know. <laughs> yes, well, you yes, have a, you have a, you, you, have a you can find crispy. Well. You can find crispy on X, but the link is twitter.com slash crispy bomb. Uh huh. Twitter's still making it wreaking its ugly head. Ladies and oh, gentlemen, yeah. a real thank you. I, I just want to say a big thank you to everyone here. I mean, this was a great show. Obviously. Again, thank you to Dread Dreadpool for taking over hosting duties as I went to go help my sister uh, with a bit of a conundrum. Thankfully, she's good. We're good. Great show. Great topics. Uh, I know that we were going to talk about Rise of the Ronin. Obviously, I'm going to change that in the title. We're going to talk about you know the, uh, another game skipping Xbox is what it's going to be. Uh, and again, we'll talk Rise of the Ronin probably sometime next week. At least next week we'll have uh, how the sales were. Uh, again, if, if anyone bought it and you're playing it, we want to hear from you to see if you like it. Uh, if you're sorry that you bought it, if you're enjoying it, because a lot of people, you know, listen, the game doesn't have to be, you know, the biggest triple A budget, you know, the hundred million dollar game to be good. It, it, maybe, it, it, you know, it, it's hitting all the marks for you. And if that's the case, that's awesome. Um, 
but we'll we'll probably tackle that at some point next week. Um, and we'll have some more data to go on with and see what uh, other people are saying about the game. If they've added any patches to fix some of the uh, the shortcomings of the game, which we've seen online. Uh, but of course, I want to wish everyone an amazing weekend. I want to thank all of the very generous donations. Uh, three codes, three uh, Dragons Dogma codes. Uh, uh, um, uh, EJ Jackson, of course, who's done it before, and as well as Hargi China, who's de- donated a ton of codes. A big thank you to you gentlemen. That is crazy generous. Of course, a big thank you to the continued support through Super Chats, as well as channel memberships. And of course, folks, I'm going to close out today's show with something that's incredibly important to me. Hopefully one day be important to you. And that's something that my dad taught us when we were kids. And he would say, Craig, treat others how you want to be treated. And also, it doesn't cost anything to be nice. You live by those rules, son. I can guarantee you, you're going to have an awesome day. So take care, everyone. We'll see you next week on the newest episode of Breakfast with Boom. Yeah.